Val takes a moment to catch his breath, noticing that the other man isn't making a move to come forward, just guarding the exit to this dead-end alley. Bruno stands like a statue, like Fell, he's sizing up the situation, but unlike Fell, is not short of breath. He merely straightens his trench coat, withdraws something from his pocket, and then Fowl hears a familiar sound, the opening of the hinged lid of the lighter, a Zippo lighter, which Bruno does with one hand and retrieves a cigarette with the other, which he then lights. After closing the lighter, he draws his revolver, his grip steady but relaxed, the barrel resting casually at his side. It isn't aimed at fall, but the weight of it is a silent reminder that escape would come at a cost. Fowl finds himself impressed and a little jealous of the charisma the other man is exuding. Don't suppose you'd want to toss me a light, would you? Fall asks, half joking. Fall puts his open hands, palms up before him, and decides to try and bluff his way out of this, although his main goal is to buy himself some time to catch his breath, as well as to size up the situation before him. Fancy ring you got there, Bruno says, eyeing the other man from head to toe. A scarab, if I'm not mistaken. Scare? Fowl asks, paying more attention to visual clues around him than to audible ones. I said scarab, Bruno repeats, on your ring, some kind of magic ring or something. You with a circus or... Oh, is that how you perceive it? Fowl asks looking down at the gem-studded ring on his finger. Yeah, sure, magic ring. I'm with the, uh, what's your deal, kid? Bruno asks, flicking ash to the wet pavement below. My deal, asks Fall, feeling agitated. What's your deal, Mr. Jumps through the air? Like, like, I don't know what. That's not normal for normal people. You know that, right? You must go through footwear like, like you go through cigarettes. And whatever it is you did to my car. That's not normal either, pal. So you're the one who's part of a circus. I got me some magic, yeah, Bruno says, smiling briefly. Where'd you get that clown car? Steal it? Pulled it out of my magic ring, if you must know. Which, believe you me, I'm already regretting doing. Fall says, lowering his hands to a more relaxed position at his waist. Your turn, clown. What did you do to my car? Guess my magic beat yours back there. Huh? You just saw because I caught you, that's all, Bruno says, careful not to approach and keeping his distance of a few meters from Fowl in case the young man would try and dart past him. The alley is about three meters wide, so Bruno simply occupies the center of it letting his burly mass take up a good meter of that and hoping that that will be enough to intimidate Far and keep him corralled for the moment, yet standing far enough from him to keep him from trying to bolt past him. Okay, you're right, it is a dead end here, Fell says, scanning beyond Bruno for anything useful and coming up with nothing. But I'm not trapped, he adds. Oh, you're not, Bruno asks, reaching up to scratch his face. Not in my book. Fall continues. So many ways to get out of a dead end or what appears to be a dead end. You can go through the walls or over them or even under them. I guess rats always try to find some way out of a maze, don't they? That's, that's funny, you know that. Because yeah, this place is just one big maze. Fall scans around more and realizes that short of activating more magic from his ring, and further risk putting himself on Bliss or the Rogue Queen's radar, the only way out of this spot was through the trench coat in front of him. You're thinking how to get past me, Bruno states matter-of-factly. Past or through, Fall says, slowly and carefully reaching up to his vest pocket. Or under me, I suppose, Bruno asks with a chuckle. Careful what you're doing there, pal. I got an itchy trigger finger, if you know what I mean, he warns, tapping the revolver gently against his leg. Eh, look, 
You seem like a reasonable man, or whatever you may be, Fall says, using his index finger and thumb to withdraw a cigarette from his vest pocket. I know damned well you're strong, so look, uh, we both got off on the wrong foot back there, right? Fall is patting his own pockets in search of a lighter, but also taking inventory of other potential devices or anything that could get him out of this whole situation. He feels a shoulder holster snug against his body, but would rather only go that route as a last resort. Fall continues his banter. It can't be good for either one of us, right, my broad-shouldered friend? And look what we've done to the rooftops and these poor streets. I bet you're just murder on stairs. Right, friend, Bruno replies, knowing full well not to trust anything the other man is saying, but playing this cat and mouse game in order to likewise size up foul. Part of this game includes subtle actions on the part of both men. Bruno, for example, now tosses the other man his Zippo lighter to find out if Fall is left or right-handed. Thanks, Fall says, managing to catch the thing absent-mindedly with his right hand. Fall, by the way, is left-handed. 